Where theme park families Theme park families Where theme park families Won't you join us now? Where theme park families Thanks for joining us, we aim to please if roller coasters got you weak in the knees We're theme park families If you want to find the best dessert or Take a party break with privacy Or find a coaster that is tame for little ones Or one to make you scream What's here? Coaster season! How exciting! Well, oh, so great! After waiting for at least two and a half months and plenty more for others, coaster season at some parks has officially started. After a very cold winter, a miserable March, coaster season is here. I'm Adam. And I'm Andrew. And we're Theme Park Families, and we're so excited for this episode after a brilliant weekend, little chilly but a brilliant weekend. There are plenty of reports from all over from people this weekend at King's Dominion and Carowinds who had their opening weekends. And we are also hearing lots of stuff from Silver Dollar City and Dollywood of people having great times there. And perhaps some low crowds equaling very short coaster lines. Great Adventure though didn't quite fare so well. What happened to uh, them this weekend? Uh, so they are supposed to open on the weekend that the Mystic Timbers Media Day was, but uh, it got postponed because it, the weather is just too cold. It was brutally cold and they had over a foot of snow there that they yeah. had to clear out, but they are supposed to open this next weekend, so I'm sure a lot of people will be hanging there. Although, from some reports, it wasn't that bad as some people went to Coney Island and they had some charity discounts and it said it wasn't that bad there. Today's focus will be on a great weekend at King's Dominion for the opening of Twisted Timbers, including the Media Day, the Season Pass Holders Preview Night, and then Saturday and Sunday. We also have an interview with a ride mascot that Andrew set up. We've got our tip of the week and our ride of the week. But let's kick it off with some news. If not riding goes as well, give me the blues. It's Andrew's news. Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm opened this weekend after being down for repairs for a number of months. One of the earlier Intamin launch coasters. It has been reported that it is running one train and has been working sporadically. But for West Coast fans, it is a good sign that it will have a better summer. That sounds like a great thing to hear. I know it only has two trains, but that the yeah. fact that it's running a little bit. Have you seen a POV of Yes, I've seen before? that one. Yeah, it starts out like Tattoo Dragster or King the Con, and it just does some random coaster stuff. <laughs> random coaster stuff. It's got the top hat yeah. nowhere near as tall yep. as, as Top Thrill and King the Con. Then it has a few other elements, but overall pretty short. Yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good for them, so that they have another thing open to like add to the greatness of that park and it's been a bunch of months that it's been closed so good to hear after lots and lots of problems that it is back up hope to get there potentially this summer if that's a possibility and by then you should be tall enough to ride it yeah was there a main problem with it the launch system had a pretty bad breakdown there yeah. was an incident that happened a few years back where the launch cable snapped and the two people in the front row got hit by some debris which caused some injuries so over the years that has been a bit of a tricky yeah. ride yeah kind of like lightning rod yeah, yeah. It, well having some issues too but it sounds like it's doing much better lightning rod overall so hopefully we get to experience Accelerator and and Knott's Berry Farm. You know they need every coaster open. That's such a busy area. In a sobering story, a grand jury in Missouri on Friday returned an indictment against Slitterbun, charging the company and a former operations director with involuntary manslaughter, aggravated battery, and reckless endangerment of a child in the 2016 death of 10-year-old Caleb. Swab on the rough water slide. Some of the charges 
is that the park did not follow amusement park industry safety standards. Lacked of their own expertise in designing a thrill ride, ignored warning about the safety of rut, failed to maintain the slide once it was built, and later covered up evidence of riders suffering injuries before Caleb was killed. Horrific story. We like to keep it lighthearted and fun, but this was too large of a story to not talk about. And a horrible incident. They already had a monetary settlement with the family from after this happened, and now potential criminal criminal charges, including one of the owners of the park now potentially being brought up on murder charges. So this kind of mounts as time goes on. And some of the details that have come out have been pretty horrific things that the park supposedly did, emails that were exchanged, and the stories just get worse and worse all the time. There was a letter that two of the employees talked about wanting to make an impressive ride for the Travel Channel. Have you seen those videos that they made for the Travel Channel? Yeah. And do you remember the one video where they showed the sandbags that were in yes. the raft and what happened? Yeah, and they like flew completely off. Exactly. Where they went airborne and the makers were watching it, those engineers and are saying, you know, were saying like, whoa, look at that, that's crazy. And sadly, now that we see those possibilities were real, that those things happened all the time. So they wanted to make something exciting to end up on the Travel Channel. Some employees were told to lie about the injuries and change reports uh, to try to make it seem like it was less dangerous than it was. There were all types of improper weight distributions where it was supposed to be the correct weighted people in sequence and that those were not properly followed. All the warnings about those shoulder straps coming off, the Velcro shoulder straps, and that there was nothing done to improve that situation that other rafts had gone airborne before this and the list of injuries of broken fingers broken toes back injuries that the list was so incredibly long of injuries and they were just kind of ignored some other industry experts warned about that metal brace system that was above the slide that the dangers that could impose and it just seemed like so many things could have been done to make sure that something like this didn't happen. So a horrific situation and thankfully for the most part at large parks that go to water park companies who have the expertise like Pro Slide and companies like that, they have engineers who are experts in the matter and it sounds like it wasn't experts who designed this slide at all. Nope. On Wednesday, a trailer for Action Point, a fictitious movie based on the wild and dangerous amusement park of the 80s and 90s, starring Johnny Knoxville, was released. Based on the trailer, Knoxville, presumably based on Action Park's infamous owner, Eugene Mulvihill, is the owner of Action Point and has to step up the craziness of the raggedy amusement park because of local competition. It is only a matter of time before Hollywood capitalized an amusement park that once injured 110 people, including 10 fractures and 45 head injuries in just one summer. All right, originally the movie was supposed to be called Action Park, but for some reason they changed it to Action Point. So that'll be coming June 1st. And I just showed you the trailer. What'd you think? Yeah, it looked really cool with all these stunts. It looked like that park was kind of dangerous with people falling through slides and getting attacked in the zoo. and By a bear, I think? Yeah. And porcupine. There was like a slide where people bumped into each other. And like, yeah, that, it just looked really cool. While it is exaggerated, certainly from the action park days, it's not that far off from reality. I told you some stories of when I went there when I was a kid, and it was a pretty insane place. With the alpine slides, they'd show you pictures of people with burns all over them, and cuts and scrapes, and people who crash because they don't slow down on those slides that were like on concrete troughs. I loved them, such fun rides, but certainly very dangerous. Yeah, and now they're, <clears throat> they're kind of boring, they're slow. Yeah, the one we did but... at Camelback is a lot slower than those, yeah. but safer, so you're guaranteed not to get hurt at least. There was 
was an instance of the water being so cold that potentially someone got a heart attack from it. The wave pool was known to be incredibly dangerous, and that's where a few of the fatalities happened. Do you remember the famous black slide I showed you? Yep, the looping one. The body slide with a loop that was only open for maybe a couple of months and injured many, many people. Just insane to think that they could have had a body slide that had approximately a 15-foot loop that you would go completely vertical. Just insane that was ever built. And shocking that the place wasn't sued for everything back then. Things were a little bit different. So I think that'll be a pretty big movie when it comes out. Looks pretty interesting. Yeah, it looks really fun. Well, before we get into the King's Dominion Media Day, Andrew, you set up an interview without me, so I don't really know any of this. Who was it that you wound up interviewing? I had a chance to interview the wizard, Merlin, from King Arthurian Literature. Dutch Wonderland in Pennsylvania has been having some issues with s and family suspended coaster so i figured i'd ask him about what's going on okay let's listen in i'm very excited to announce a first for theme park families where for the first time we have an interview with a ride mascot i'd like to welcome to the show merlin from merlin's mayhem thank you dear boy how are you with pulling a sword from a rock well, I've never come across a weapon lodged in a boulder, so I'm not sure. I have lots of other hobbies anyway. Well, that's unfortunate. Can you please tell the audience who you are? Well, of course. I am a magical, mysterical friend of a piece of steel genius that will create joy for all families in the realm of Pennsylvania in the kingdom of Lancaster. Uh, meaning that you're a Family inverted coaster designed by SNS at Dutch Wonderland. What? I'm moving on. You were advertised to open during the summer of 2017. It is currently spring of 2018. Do you still think that you can open on time? Of course, dear boy. My life is lived in a very different way from yours, you see. I was born in the future and lived my life backwards, so I think that means that I will open up on time, right? Uh, no. The Empire State Building, Whoa. which is built almost 90 years ago during the Great Depression, is over 1,400 feet high, has 102 floors, and took about 13 months to build. You are 60 feet tall and 1,300 feet in length. And 16 months later, you are still not open. Care to comment? Are you getting sassy with me, boy? Crucio! That's Dumbledore. You're Merlin. Quite right, dear boy. Quite right. Is the mayhem part of the ride? The fact that you're not opening? No. That is just the mystery of being a magician. You never know what I'm up to. Mayhem is my pet dragon that I raised from an egg. Blah, blah, blah. Boring. Oh. Is it true that you are jealous of Lightning Rod's troubles and are trying to bask in the same publicity? With a flick of my wand, I could have that launch running perfectly. Once I decide to open, I will run perfectly without any delays. I'm just a bit of a diva in the magical coaster world. Does Dutch Wonderland hate you? I'm hungry. <laughs> Why did you open a Twitter account? Social media seems a bit beneath, you know? It wasn't me, I tell you. The account was traced to a young woman's house in New Jersey who obsessively eats pizza, enjoys McDonald's parking lots, and goes to great adventure more than any one person should. She posted some nasty things about me. I shall turn her into a newt, and she won't get better. <laughs> okay. That's a bit vindictive. Is it true that the ride's original design was potentially going to maim people by running into supports and a tunnel? Nonsense! I would have used Skelligro to return the riders to their natural states. Oh my gosh, that's Madame Pomfrey. Oh. <laughs> You're a two-bit failed wizard. Oh. 
How do you intend to make the Season Pass members happy who bought a 2017 Season Pass? Thinking that you were going to open? Well, I will just place the Obliviate charm on them, and they will forget that 2017 even existed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Again, you're Merlin, not Professor Lockhart. I could practice. Oh my gosh. Just work on opening instead of learning new magic. Uh, well, thank you, I guess, Merlin, for joining us on Theme Park Families. It has been a pleasure, and we hope in the future you are a great success, as opposed to the big letdown that you've been so far. Oh, Vata Kedavra! Sip it! Wow, so that was a strange interview. Did yeah. that go how you thought it would? Uh, no, I was actually kind of mad at him because... He was going, like, off track, and he was being kind of like some other wizards. Uh, it didn't go as planned. Like, I remember one part, he, I said, like, does Dutch Wonderland hate you? And he just randomly said, I- I'm hungry. And Well, you know, sometimes you have to have a little more patience with older people. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, but... But, like, come on, he's building a ride, so, like... Well, I don't know the... if he's the one building well, it, I mean... Well, he's, like... The head of the ride. He's the mascot, so he should, like, expect interviews and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, I think it would have been a little better if he was more serious. Well, we'll see. It'll be interesting if the ride does actually open up this yeah. year. That's a lot of mayhem. I, yeah, that, that's a lot of mayhem. Well, I like that you're really taking the initiative and in trying to get more content for the show. So, I really appreciate you taking care of that. We were originally supposed to drive down Wednesday night to Virginia for the Twisted Timbers Media Day, but unfortunately, it wound up snowing and they got approximately five to six inches down in Virginia. So they moved it back a day till Friday and it actually worked out well for us as then we only had to take one day off from school. So we left Thursday night instead of Wednesday night and we wound up staying with Clint and Sherry Novak from In The Loop as they are good friends of ours that we've known for a few years now and it was so generous of them to let us stay with them so that was very cool. Both of them are such great ambassadors of the park at King's Dominion. Huge fans who are there all the time and promote the park through their videos and the podcast in the loop. And it was a really special time for them for a park that they love and know so incredibly well. Another funny part of it was Kitty. Because what is Kitty's name? Uh, Twisted Timbers. So whenever they talk about that name, it's been connected to their cat since last summer and not their eye. What a cute little kitty, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that he was pretty cute. Very energetic. Yeah, yeah, and so it seems like everybody there knows Clint Novak. Like he's like the king of King's Dominion. Even ride operators and just random people in the park would say. Hey, Klonoa, can I take a picture? Well, it's the most brilliant move on his part to have the beanie. Everyone needs some kind of signature element. And his beanie is so recognizable. It's it's very impressive being at King's Dominion with him because everyone comes up. Some ask for a picture, and how does he respond to that? He just says, oh, sure. Yeah, he's pretty nice with that and takes pictures with a lot of people. And talks to them. Yeah, he is definite royalty there. It was funny. He had one ride on Intimidator where he rode with a fan. And the fan said to him, I don't know if you remember this story. Yeah, I do. And the fan got to ride with him. And he said, oh, I love you on In The Loop. You're my second favorite person. My favorite is the guy who wears the beanie. No, it's a silly hat. Silly hat. A silly hat, the term that he used? Yeah. Okay, yeah, my favorite's the one who wore the silly hat. And he took his beanie out of his shirt and said, oh, you mean this one? So he was both, the first favorite and second favorite of that fan. Mm. Pretty, pretty funny story. We talked about the possibility of carrying a credit card machine with him, a little handheld type thing that he could start charging for pictures. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he could make a, a nice amount of money on that. Uh-huh. So yeah, very, really cool walking around with him. He knows so much of the park. He's done lots of great videos, including the 10 things you might not know about King's Dominion. I don't, do you remember that video from a few yeah. years back? That's where he talked about a lot of the special details about King's Dominion. Like he talked about the fact in that video that King's Dominion was the park that had the most 300-foot attractions, which are what? Intimidator 305. Yep. Eiffel Tower. Yep. Drop Tower. Yep. And... One that you rode this past weekend. Oh, the... Yes. Um, uh, One that makes 
Seeker. Yes, the one that makes Clint a little nervous, which yeah. is why he likes it, as he's not a big fan of heights. So I had to Seeker. ride with him, and I had to like calm him down, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You were a common influence, which was nice of you. Another one of the interesting points in that video was the moon tree. Do you uh, remember yeah. that? It's the tree that's been to the moon? Yeah, the, How the did seed. How go to the moon? Well, the seeds were brought up. It was part of the NASA program that Clint and that video can tell you a lot more about. But they brought seeds to the moon and then planted them in different places throughout the country. And one of those you can find in the center of the park, in one of those yeah. walkways that goes from front to back. It's right behind Eiffel Tower. Exactly. Just one of the trees closest to that. And and so that's kind of a neat detail. It's like it's the back of his hand. It's, it's like, yeah. Or the front of his hand because he probably sees the front of his hand more. That's a good point. How well do you know your hands? Uh, well, I know them. They I can't remember the uh, lines or the names. Like, my thumb have... is Fred, I think. Oh, Freddy the Thumb. Yeah. All right, that sounds like a mob name. Freddy the Thumb. Yeah, I can't, hey. yeah, I can't remember any Give of the Give you others. concrete slippers, Freddy the Thumb. Yeah. Well, Friday morning, it was brutally chilly. Holy cow. So we got to the park. They have three tables set up. One was for ACE members, as some ACE members were able to go. One was for media. And then one was for trade publications. Yeah, like there's just random like people in the industry. Yeah, exactly. Like, like VIP. Like VIP, exactly. And so we were a part of those VIPs. No, and so, aren't we part of the media? No, media table was all the way to the left. So that was people like from newspapers and TV stations. So we waited outside a little bit longer. They It took them a while. And it was that point about 9.30 in the morning. And it was chilly. With the wind chill, it was probably in the low 30s, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was really cold. Yeah, so we waited outside for a while. But it was nice to talk to people and meet some people in line there. Eventually, they let us in and we headed to the back of the park. Now, this was our second media day that we've been to. Our first was almost exactly two years ago. And what was our first media day? It was the Joker. Joker at Great Adventure. We were there representing Costa Radio, did an interview, and we're on the show for that. So they took us to the back of the park and they had an impromptu stage set up with a big screen and speakers in front of Windseeker. They had some nice mementos, including placards made of yeah. plastic that was a commemorative first rider media day. Yeah, it felt like the case was a glass and then inside it there was like a paper saying Twisted Timbers Media Day and then it showed the stats like height, 100 something feet tall. Speed, 45 miles per hour, stuff like that. And it was nice because they were all numbered, so they gave us the advice, take the lowest number you can, as that just makes it that more special. So it was nice of them to give us those kind of special gifts for us. Yeah. I thought that was very nice. The proceedings started pretty short after that, where Maggie Sellers, who was the brand new director of communications, as in that was her first day yep. on the job, which is pretty amazing. And I thought she did a great job. She didn't seem nervous at all. And so she gave a little speech. Tony Johnson, who's the new general manager, who we got to talk to a couple of times, and what was he like? Tony was really nice. He was he was very cool. He talked to us a lot like about what we do and stuff. And so yeah, he was really really nice. A great guy, just uh, over the top friendly. Where he's been connected to that park since the seventies, yeah. and now to come full circle that he is the general manager. That's a great sign, and I think he'll be great for the park. Rob Decker, the Vice President of Planning and Design, who is behind a lot of the coasters that have been created in the last few years, he gave a little speech as well. And Scott Clemens, Director of Marketing, spoke as well. If you remember, there were two different videos that they played during the presentation. Yes. Do you remember what those were? There was one where it was time lapse, time it's called. lapse yeah. of the ride getting built. Where you start from completely 100% hurler and see everything getting pulled apart, pulled down, and then you get to see the red rails put on and how it eventually became what it was. Was, and that was really neat to see. And do you remember the other video too? It was the RMC video where they just showed the RMC crew putting on some rails and yeah. the rails attached to cranes and, and how they did that. We weren't in a rush to get on as we were talking to a number of people and we waited in line maybe about 20 minutes or so as they had two trains running that day and it took long to dispatch because they had to set up the GoPro on front of one of the trains that was filming the POVs. That took a little bit to do. But the whole entire area looks great. They put down so many pavers and bricks getting rid of blacktop. So that whole area around Windseeker and the restaurant and even Apple's Apple looks so improved. Did yeah. you did you like what they did to Apple's Apple? Yeah. Paint job wise? Um Yeah, the paint job looks cool. I didn't 
really care what the name was. I mean, it's kind of weird. Apple's apple. Uh, weird is good. I like weird better yeah. than normal. But yeah, the paint job is really good. Uh, it looks very bright because it used to be like blue and yellow. Blue and yellow, yeah. Now it's like, like a nitro color. Is it orange and green now? Yeah, orange and the cars green. were red, right. Yeah. Orange and green, and then the cars were red. And then they had these cool sort of retro symbols, 50s kind of symbols on the cars, which look kind of neat. So that whole area looked terrific, but the brickwork just improves the look of that whole area a lot. The actual queue is so impressive, where yes. they've really taken what Mystic Timbers did and added onto it so much. They really have a number of tractors that are there, a number of 50s trucks, including the one tractor that it's over the queue you kind of walk under it like yeah. it got thrown up above you because of some chaotic incident which was really neat well my favorite part of it is the place sort of in the middle of the queue yeah it's more towards the beginning yep and so you go in front of it but then if the line is long you also then come past it again going the other way and so what did that middle part comprise so, there was a white orb surrounded by rocks. Oh, and this. what were the rocks like? Yeah. They were like orange and black. It looked like the meteor maybe hit it in that strange event. And maybe that's why, like, maybe it was an alien who sent it down. And that's why all that mischief has been going on. But yeah, and then the rocks were in patterns, like lines. It was really cool. And then right next to it on the, on the bank, sort of, there was a broken down truck and it looked so good to me because it was like rusty, the um, yes. windows were kind of cracked. It looked so perfect how they designed it and like it looks like it was crashed and it was from a long time ago. So yeah, I think they did a really good job with that. And the rock swirls, it's going to be interesting to see how well they're able to maintain it because they're patterns of little rocks in a circle and they've got swirls in the midst of that circle that create these patterns that look beautiful. And then as you continue walking, you see the actual orchard. It's really nice how they did it in the infield of the coaster where they planted sod and then planted what looks like apple trees yeah. to make it look like an orchard. Yeah, and they're all in rows like an orchard would be. I wonder if those would be actual apple trees. It's going to be interesting to see. You would have to imagine they made it authentic that it's going to be apple trees yeah. so the actual queue is very long even longer perhaps than the original hurler line was yeah. and really when you look at that coaster does anything there make you think of hurler whatsoever the actual coaster Not itself really it's kind of like the design where it goes a drop and it goes around the but station yeah but just looking at it like nah. it, okay and so that's the thing a lot of people online responding to videos about it look at what they've done and say oh it was just a different hurler i think if you've never been to that park but you've heard of hurler or maybe seen a picture you would never look at that and say oh that's a little bit of a modified hurler it just looks so incredibly different no. so as the queue continues you then walk under that tractor as i mentioned and you come to the same station but it's cool how they modified the station a little bit because uh, how is it different so the outside of the station is kind of like rusty it's saying like something like dominion's apple orchard company it doesn't say exactly that but something like that and then on the top it says twisted timbers and letters and inside it shows the mystic timbers logo and then there's like bin one bin two bin three like right like it's apple a, bins like yeah like it's a holding building for apple shipments going out and then the one other interesting thing about that orb we speculated ooh, what does that do at night since it's this maybe five feet in diameter white circular orb we were just wondering so, what would happen with that at yeah. night right Okay. So it kind of, it glows like different colors. It'll be blue and then five seconds later or 10 seconds later. Actually, it'll be green. And I think that happens because of oh, maybe what the, it could have been like an alien orb that they sent. Maybe it's because of like the chemicals or something that are making it happen. The glowing part may be like what they use to make the disaster happen. Mm -hmm. I like it. Good ideas. So we were mind blown that night. Well, not speaking of mind blower down nah. in Florida. No, that's not what we meant. We were so excited that preview night to go back and see, was it going to be lit up? And I took video and put it on our Facebook showing the beautiful lights changing colors, which didn't do it justice in the video, but still look cool. And then there was a light in that truck as well that changed colors. So that was pretty neat. Well, yeah. so let's get on to the ride itself. We get into the station, and at first, to make things go a little bit quicker, they were assigning seats, and we got the second and third row. Well, 
Um, if it's busy, then they assign seats. But if it's exactly. not as busy, they let you pick your seat. Exactly. We got the second and third row. And for slightly larger listeners, what they do is they gently push the restraint against you. And if you need an extra push to get the all clear, they will push down a little bit. They don't jump on it. Uh, but... Did we see a single person do a walk of shame? No, I didn't see somebody. So between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, not a single person. I think they're a little bit less constrictive than the older RMC trains, but I found the restraints pretty comfortable. How about you? Yeah, the restraints are a lot different. They're a lot more cooler than any other RMC trains because first, I'll talk about the seats because they had two little handles that... Like, look like game controllers. Yeah, so it's like you're playing a video game or flying, like, a Jedi plane or something like that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it is neat. And then the trains, they looked the same as the truck outside in the line. They look rusty, and they say, like, the title, like, uh, blah, blah, blah's Apple Orchard. Like, carts or something. And that looks really, really cool. I liked how they put their time and effort into just making it look very... You know, exact. Absolutely. It was kind of nice that Cedar Fair helps each other out as there were representatives from other parks. And they had Tony Clark from Cedar Point and Don Helbig from Kings Island there to help get people on trains. So it's neat that they all help each other out. The different communication directors there. We went on our first ride. It was super cold. It was windy. And it felt a little bit slower then. The ride finished and we got off. And immediately, what did you say? I said, wow, this is the best RMC I've ridden. The best RMC. That's not any small statement because how many RMCs have we done now? About five. So I think we did five before that and that was the so, sixth, yeah. right? Wicked Cyclone, Storm no. Chaser, Goliath, Lightning Rod, and Outlaw Run. All right, so that is a pretty good list of RMCs. And so when you got off and immediately your first statement was, that's my favorite RMC, that's some stiff competition. Wicked Cyclone is beloved. Lightning Outlaw Rod is Run. Lightning Rod, Outlaw Run. All of those are really high up. A lot of people love Goliath. And then Storm Chaser is pretty high up there as well. And so that was your first reaction I thought was pretty amazing. And I have to admit, when I was done that first time, I was left underwhelmed. I thought it was moving pretty slowly in the second row it was pretty forceless but i kept an open mind and we went back in line pretty much immediately after that and then we got the next to last and last row by this point maybe a half hour later it was starting to warm up a little bit more the wheels getting warmer and in the back row what a difference that was right so much more intense the airtime hills really pull you and even though the drop is not that steep it felt like skyrush to you right yeah, I think so. It's an interesting comparison where Sky Rush or even El Toro, El Toro that first yeah. drop. I don't think I've been on any coaster that has a more dramatic difference from front to back. So front of the train is great for nervous riders, first time riders, and those who are a bit nervous. But back of the train, holy cow, including Clint, yes. who said that was crazily intense and almost said it might have been too much from the back row. I've never had a coaster that big of a difference. So I immediately adored it then. And out of all the other times we did it, we tried to go towards the back more, but still did it in the front as well, just to get that difference. All right, let's discuss uh, some more of the specifics. First of all, yes, that lift hill was incredibly loud. If you were filming anywhere near the lift hill, people had to stop. If you were trying to talk to someone next to you, that was incredibly loud, that lift hill. Yes. What a difference. Storm Chaser that has a similar first drop. I remember thinking, ah, that wasn't that great. But for some reason, maybe it was the extra few feet uh, that this had, but I thought this uh, first drop with the barrel was much better. And they're pretty much the same thing. The steepness is not much of a difference. And the height is not that far off. So maybe it's just the magic of Twisted Timbers that did it. Yeah, uh, it could have been some magic. Yeah, gravity. Like like Merlin's magic, perhaps. So then after that drop, you've got the mini hill like Millennium Forces Station Hill, which I kind of love. Fun little quick hill. Then you've got the overbank that turns to the right. Nowhere near as extreme as Wicked Cyclone's first overbank after that drop. But still a fun overbank turn, but uh, not that extreme. Well, then you've got those three medium-sized airtime hills after that with the great ejector air. And what were the reactions from people every Every time you went over one of those hills. Everybody's like, oh, oh, 
every single person. And that's the amazing thing is that a lot of these people are well-seasoned coaster riders. And every time you went over those three hills, it was just sheer excitement. After that, you make that right-hand turn for the cutback, which is that three-quarter barrel roll yeah. where you roll to the right. And yeah, then... and then you, you kind of go upside down, but then you flip back over and... Almost like Wicked Cyclone's first inversion where you kind of barrel roll uh, and stall and then go back the other way. Almost. Not quite as dramatic as that, but a really fun element. That next section was super fun with you got a couple small hills and then the opposite banking. And then it came to your favorite part. And this was on In The Loop's video that you can check out that they posted on the review of Twisted Timbers. That Andrew was a part of that video where he describes his favorite part of the ride then. And so definitely check that out on In The Loop's YouTube channel. So right before the barrel, after the curve that you just talked so about. So after that, yeah, after yeah. the cutback, yeah. And some bumps. Then you go under the lift hill again, and you're, like, curving to the left. And then you immediately curve back to the right, like one of I-305's or Maverick's turn or Skyrush. And it's just so intense. Like, you don't expect that quick turn. And, yeah, that's that's just so intense. That's my favorite part of the ride. Such a cool part. Absolutely. And pretty intense and really fun. After that, you have the really fun barrel yeah. roll, which is a little bit slow. So a really fun at that point. That's good. Yeah, it's exactly. Because you get hang time on that. And to a lot of people, experiencing just a lap bar and ha that kind of hang time, it's, yeah. it's pretty exciting. It's not as slow as Wicked Cyclone's last barrel roll before you come into the station. That one feels super slow. Almost like Val Raven's roll as well, where you're going super slow. But then it's got some small hills after that as you then come into the station. And I thought it held its speed up pretty well. A lot of people were concerned that that second half was going to be too slow. Did you feel that at all? No, I didn't feel like that at all. It just never loses speed. It's always fast and intense with these little random bumps that I think they just didn't know what to do with. But they did a good job with it. It was intense. It just never lost any speed. In that way, it's the perfect example of where speeds and or height really doesn't necessarily matter. People look at statistics and think, oh, this ride's not going to be that crazy, but it really was a fun ride. It'll be really interesting to see when things warm up, and that's what a lot of people were talking about. It barely got into the 50s most of the days, and a lot of people felt like it was getting pretty intense already. So by midsummer, when it's 90 degrees out, that the ride breaks in a little bit, it's going to be very interesting to see how intense that ride gets because a lot of people say including our good friend brian from civil gore podcast when he went to the media day for wicked cyclone he said that it really was pretty slow that first year and it took a while for the wheels to break in to make that a little bit faster so we did it approximately six more times that day and throughout the rest of the weekend did it a few more times probably something like 14 15 times in total and by that last time we did it i didn't feel sick of that ride in any way now nah, you can just keep re-riding it so smooth it's like butter or glass so i mean if you don't like intense then maybe you should stop after like three rides but if you like intense and like airtime then you could just ride it for the whole day now interesting using that word intense as much as you just did thinking about it I think, and especially since we're theme park families and thinking about the whole family here, I think this is the most comfortable, re-rideable RMC of all the ones we've done. Yeah. Whereas all those other coasters, and I love all of them, Lightning Rod and yeah. Wicked Cyclone and Storm Chaser. And Outlaw Run. And Outlaw Run. All of them have points on the ride where it can get really uncomfortable on your legs. Where there are some intense moments and awkward outside banking. And those are the, my favorite parts of RMCs. Where you're turning to the right but banking to the left. And it's such a unique experience that other coasters don't do. But I thought this coaster had no moments where it was uncomfortable at all. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. It's intense. So don't expect it to be everything not not as like bumpy or as much turns as it has because at the end it has like all these little pops of air yep. or little bank turns and so those are kind of fun and intense but don't expect those are like all floater airtime. Right. This is definitely more ejector. And so yeah. in terms of RMCs for young kids who are just at 48 or a little bit above or people in your family or friends who are nervous about coasters I think this is the most easy 
easiest ridden of any of the coasters that RMC has made. And I think this is a good candidate for potentially someone's first coaster with inversions, the first coaster that goes upside down. Kind of like yeah. Super Duper Looper yeah. and Hershey is a lot of kids' first ride that goes upside down. I think this one, while intense with its airtime, isn't painful or intimidating or scary. Where something like even Anaconda at the same height yeah, at 48 funny. inches can be a little bit rougher on the body. So in that way, I think they've made a great coaster for all members of the family. So we were one of the last ones that stayed till media day. We wanted to soak things up. We were, had uh, lunch there at the buffet, which was yes. so well done. It was great. They had a lot of new offerings that they were going to have for the year for the dining plans, yeah. including crab cake sandwiches, their new sliders. They had shrimp and some of the shakes that are going to be at that new yeah, restaurant was, right by it. Yeah, and we could, we could just take whatever you want. It was free. So it was like just a sampling of what there would be. And we all liked the stuff pretty well. Yeah, and so that was very nice. And they had desserts and stuff. Yeah, it was very fancy, and the staff there did a great job. They were so friendly, dishing the food out, and that was really nice of them to put on. So after that, we were some of the last few there, and it was nice that we got to talk to Fred Grubb and Alan Schilke yes, from they RMC. Were, they were very cool and nice. They were very chill and laid back. They were, and I felt bad. So many people were asking them for photographs and interviews, so we just wanted to talk to them chill and just be yeah. chill about it. And it was nice just talking to them and not worry about, oh, can we take your picture? I always feel a little weird about doing that kind of stuff. But both really nice guys. What did Fred Grubb say he would do for you uh, guys? So, if any of you don't know, he's building an RMC coaster in his backyard for his grandchildren. It was the test track. Yes, for the, for the Raptor. For or, the Raptor track, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, he said that we could be his grandchildren and come and ride it for a day. Honorary grandkids, exactly. So yeah. that's pretty sweet. Uh, and so that was nice of him and just such a friendly guy. And then Alan, about as chill as could be. Yeah. He had skater sneakers on and his long hair. And yeah, he was great to talk to that yeah. he's got a son around your age. Yeah, the, who, he was like eight. And isn't as into coasters as yeah. dad is. And they were talking about things they like to do like uh, mountain, bi biking, mountain biking and that. Skiing. And skiing and that. One of the things Alan really likes to do is build ramps and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. build bike ramps. And yeah, they were just so nice talking to us. And I think he has other times on his hand to, like like you said, build mountain bike ramps and do stuff with his family instead of having to worry about RMC stuff. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because it can't just be about coasters all the time. No, he has to hang out with his family. It's so really nice to talk to them and hopefully we get to chat with them more at future media days, yeah. uh, perhaps, and get to know them a little bit better and maybe do something a little bit more official then. Our last thing that we did at the media day was have a chance to interview Maggie and Scott, who again were the communications director and the director of media. So let's take a listen and see what they had to say. We at Theme Park Families are so excited to be here at King's Dominion for the Twisted Timbers Media Day. And we're so happy to talk with Scott Clemens, Director of Marketing and Sales. Thank you so much for having us today. Sure, glad you were able to make it. Can an apple orchard survive spring snow and numerous hard frosts? Well, you know, we had three inches of snow two days ago and our maintenance crew and our operations people worked really hard and you can see all the snow is gone. So we survived the snow and it was a fun ride today. A little chilly, but it was fun. It's amazing. All the things you try to prepare for months and months in advance. You've been planning this ride for a year. What about a possible snowstorm a couple days before opening day? It's crazy, but I guess you really have to prepare for everything. Before talking about the star of the show, uh, can you talk a little bit about all of the changes that have occurred to the entire area and how they sort of honor the history and heritage of the park? Yeah, you know, one of the things that we've been trying to do over the last couple of years is, is you know, really diversify our product. And, you know, really, uh, when we put in Delirium in 2016, we knew we wanted to put more effort into, you know, kind of rejuvenating Candy Apple Grove. Mm -hmm. So after Delirium went in in 16, then we put in Twisted Timbers this year. So not only do we redo the ride, the menu and uh, what we're serving in the jukebox is changing. Um, the old Rock Shop gift shop right. is turned into uh uh, Twist and Shop, which has a lot of the uh, Twisted Timbers merchandise in there. It looks a beautiful shop, looks really good. Um, one of my favorite things, quite honestly, is we took out 
acre, I think at least an acre of blacktop. You right. Know? And it's all it's all brick pavers. It's beautiful. Put some uh, did some bathroom renovations. We painted a couple rides. So the whole area is just getting a, a nice refresh, and we'll continue that over the next couple years as well. And it really is noticeable. The difference is beautiful. It great. really is stunning and great to see. Glad you like it. Oh, we certainly do. Can you tell the listeners who are unaware the story behind the Twisted Timbers? Yeah, so Twisted Timbers, you know, not everybody's, we're not real sure what happened. So Mm -hmm. back in the 1950s, some traumatic event, we don't know if it was natural or supernatural, but, you know, it destroyed the harvest, it threw tractors up in the air, destroyed trucks, all these weird things happened, and it was a beautiful sunny day like today. So really, nobody knows what happened, and it's been, you know, shut down since then until today where we just opened it back up for the tours. So... And, it's, uh, it's a mystery. And Maggie, I, th- I think we noticed some interesting rock theming and a strange sort of white globe thing in the middle near a truck that's kind of interesting. Have you noticed that? I have. Again, <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened. It's very peculiar. And it's going to be interesting to see it at nighttime, to see if anything's going on in that area at night. Yeah, if it's like glowing or something. or well, That would be kind of creepy, wouldn't it? Can't wait. Be very mysterious. And it's very interesting. It sort of took a lot of the cues from Mystic Timbers and just edited it, it seems, times five, the amount of stuff you have back there. So it really is pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I noticed the um, right near the station there's that tractor just hanging on a steel bar. How cool is that, right? Up yeah. yeah, right? What a nice touch over your head. Yeah. Hoping it's firmly planted there, right? Yeah. <laughs> you talked about diversification and how does this ride experience, do you think, create something, a unique experience for patrons who are coming to the park right well you know we've got all of our coasters are different so we've got 13 coasters Mm -hmm. and they're all very different so you know you've got i-305 which is just extreme thrill you know it's 305 feet you know you're 90 plus miles an hour it is just an aggressive coaster yeah now for the families you know we've got you know woodstock express which is a fun smaller wooden coaster got grizzly but then where else you get blasted out of the top of a volcano. Exactly. So, you know, they're all very different from each other. And of course, this is the only hybrid coaster that we have. So, you know, it combines that, you know, traditional look and feel of a wooden coaster, but it's a smooth ride and you can do different elements uh, going upside down numerous times on this ride. So again, very, very different. And they're all fantastic. So very diverse group of our roller coasters we have here. And it's interesting that you mentioned the hybrid. Now we know Big Brother over in Ohio is opening up a small little ride that a couple of people are talking about around the country and perhaps world. And we were wondering, does Kings Dominion feel like they have a little bit of bragging rights that, ooh, we've got the first RMC in the chain? Is that something that you kind of discuss behind the scenes? You know, it is the first RMC in the company, yep. um, <laughs> which is pretty exciting. But it's also the first hybrid coaster in the mid-Atlantic. So there's that as well and it's just it's very exciting that it's here um and then it's finally open oh it is so exciting and for both of you front row back row what are your thoughts on the ride in terms of preferences i have always been a front row person Mm -hmm. like my whole life now my wife is a back row rider right right. we usually have to go on rides multiple times so which is never a problem what about you maggie i don't know I like the middle. <laughs> it, I'm, interesting. So I assumed wrongly. So you like the middle. The middle, you know, you get kind of the both experience of the front and the back. So it's right there in the middle. I'm happy to ride it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> which is awesome after so much preparation. And for us, I think one of the things we noticed is the rewrite of this coaster. Yep. This is close I-305, incredible coaster. And as Andrew gets close to 54, we're hoping he gets to experience it soon. Yeah. Now, I-305 is not necessarily the kind of coach you can do 30 times in a row, right. as great as it is. I it's did a pretty meet intense... somebody today who did 30 in one who, day. Who actually so, did yeah, that exact number yeah. that we were talking about. That's yes, funny. Yeah. But it seems like this is the type of coaster with Twisted Timbers that you can re-ride over and over right. and over. And the great thing, no matter what age, a, you know, a six-year-old who's tall enough or a 70-year-old, it's, it's a kind of coaster that is for any age, I think. Yeah, I I, I do. I agree with that. I will say it, I don't believe it's a rite of passage coaster mm-hmm. because most of the time when you think about a rite of passage, passage coaster you usually don't think about going upside down right so it's usually something that is you know like a a woodstock or an avalanche that we have here where they're a little bit faster but they're not taking you upside down right so to me this is a little bit beyond that because you've got multiple inversions and uh 
that really takes it, I think, up above that category right. as I kind of look at those different breakdowns of how I classify them. Mm-hmm. So I do believe it is it is it definitely has that higher thrill threshold. And I, you're exactly right on the repeatability. So, you know, people can ride this over and over. I'll come here and I'll do I-305, and I absolutely love that ride. But with that one, I may do it once at the beginning and once at the, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, I could do back-to-back. Right, right. Um, but again, still high thrill. Again, it's just not that aggressiveness that you have in the I-305. I think it's interesting that you say Rite of Passage because there are different steps of Rite of Passage right. and including what everyone talks about, what was your first inverting coaster? What right. was the first time you went upside down? And I think a coaster like this is a great opportunity to have a, your first upside down coaster that's not gonna scare kids. This right. is not that level of thrill. So I think in that way, it could be a different type of Rite of Passage sure, yeah, coaster. Yeah, depending on your kid and their, their, their thrill and their bravery, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, exactly. Looking back, how much fun did the park have with the really more coming tease? <laughs> <laughs> that really got the coaster world a buzz when you yeah. had that. Oh, would read something into that. Yeah, you know, some people may have said we were doing a little bit of trolling uh-huh. with that, the really more coming. Um, but, you know, yeah, there was a lot of speculation in the, in the coaster world that where we were going and and you know it wasn't too hard to guess where that we would eventually get there Mm -hmm. but you know if we would have just said yeah you're right you guys would have thought that was just as boring as we would have right 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 and as marketers we want it we want people to be excited and we want to be excited so yeah we wanted to make sure that you know like i know we we took some heat for the snoopy peering over the fence right at the the hurler (laughs) but you know what at the end of the day if all if everybody who gave us a little bit of grief by that thinks back on that That was fun. Brilliant, brilliant. You know? and, and all the T's right. upside down as high as what does that mean? And, and very angles. low tech. Yeah. 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 Was, yep. you know, we, we just had some fun with it. And you know, you know, when I talked to most you know, our fans, you know, they got into it as well. Yeah. And just really liked it. So again, we could have easily said, Yep, that's what we're doing. And yeah, there's that's no fun. Exactly. But we want to have we want to make sure that we had fun with it because we knew that that you all would have fun with it as well. And do you find that strange sometimes that the coaster community takes things so seriously? Does that is that weird to you that this is about fun, it's a hobby, and that some of the community gets a little too yeah, crazy? Every, every, or is that every hobby? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, everybody has their thing. Like, I am a diehard North Carolina basketball fan. Oh, yeah. And you don't mess with me about Carolina basketball. Right, right. So everybody has their thing. So it doesn't surprise me now. Not at all. It's, I, it's just different. You know, different people have uh, their their passions are very deep in certain areas and deeper in others and Mm -hmm. you know you're just you're right in the coaster community there are people that um are very very passionate about certain things and nostalgia and all that stuff and then there's others that are just just diehard coaster fans and you know they're you know maybe taken a little bit differently so yeah there's a so it doesn't surprise yep, me. Yep. No, it doesn't bother me either. So Okay, it makes People sense. People just love their coasters and get a little defensive sometimes. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's almost a way of life for some people. A little protective, yep, too. Yep, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, we won't mention Duke basketball in this conversation no, at all. No, we won't. That we would... won't talk about Duke basketball. <laughs> if somebody says, oh, I just love theory or something and then a coaster voice says no valerian force is a lot better oh yeah <laughs> i've Those, ridden both of them they're yeah. both really good in their own way and they, they do are. different things exactly they they're both great for what they have plus 15 year advantage for one versus the other yeah. a lot of technology changes yeah is there anything else for 2018 that's new well, there's mm-hmm. a lot of different things that are, that are we talked about earlier, the mm-hmm. Coke Refresh stations yes. and all that. Um, from an event standpoint, we got a couple things. So okay. Taste of Virginia, yes. which we started last year, is now going to be on Fridays. Okay. So it starts on May 4th, so it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And again, with that, it's, um, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's an additional layer. You know, we've really taken our food quality up to a much higher level this mm-hmm. year. Uh, last year we really started with these events. Now it'll carry through our restaurants as well. So that event is going to be great. And then obviously, you know, we talked earlier about uh, Winterfest. So um, so exciting. That is going to be fantastic. It's um, you know that'll kick off on Black Friday. Um, uh, and it's I went and saw our, saw the event at Kings Island um, right after that opened this year because three of our parks, you know, uh, Carowinds, Kings Island, mm-hmm. and um, Worlds of Fun started it in 2017. Right. So I had the pleasure of going out to Kings Island. And I tell you what, when you walk through the front gate Mm -hmm. and you see our fountain as an ice skating rink and you see lights all the way up the Eiffel Tower, blows you away. 
absolutely magical. And when I walk, because, you know, Kings Island has the tower and the fountain. Absolutely. When I walked through the gates of Kings Island, it was absolutely magical. You could immediately envision the same sight here. It's going to be doubt. beautiful. It yeah. really is. As was said earlier, jokingly, you can imagine it being 90 degrees. Yeah, uh, Virginia. Uh, yeah, you just never know. Yeah. So we're looking forward to a great year at Kings Dominion. It's going to be an amazing year, 2018. Thank you both so much for having us. Thank it was an you. amazing event, and you have such a hit on your hands. Well, thank you. We appreciate you coming. Guys, good job. Yep. You guys Excellent. are good interviewer. Okay, that was very cool of them to do that. Yeah, and we so appreciate their invitation. As a fairly new podcast, it was great for them to reach out to us and, and invite us there and give us the time to do an interview when they were interviewing all day long. Both of them so genuinely friendly and got a lot of cool information. So thanks go out to both of them for that. Well, throughout the whole weekend, it was cool to be able to meet so many people, either that we knew from online, were Facebook friends, or part of the media that we were familiar with, like Jerry from Coaster Force, Coaster 101 was there, Coaster Addict was there as Coaster well. Coaster Studio. Coaster Studios, of course. Rocco from One Wheel Productions. It was cool to meet him as well. A bunch of Facebook friends like Matt and Crystal and Russell and his daughter, who we yes. hung out with the whole night. They How were nice cool. were they? Yeah. Awesome. We got to meet Ann, who's a good friend of Clint and Cherry's. So super friendly as well. We got to meet Ariel from Ride This One. Her new boyfriend, Alex, who was very friendly. And there were so many great moments. And I'm sure I'm forgetting people. And for those who I didn't mention, it was great to meet everyone. It was just sort of a whirlwind that whole weekend. One of my favorite moments was we got to meet Daniel, whose nickname is Pancake, who won an award from Coaster Radio what pretty recently. Couple? Yeah, it, exactly. He played the game show of Pick Your Coaster, where it was five coasters battling against five. And he had to win. Uh, yeah, and he be, like picked out five roller coasters exactly. for him. And Mike picked, or Mike on his database clicked a button and the. From and RCDB, then, yeah. exactly. And so he won a bunch of prizes there. And so it was great to meet Daniel there. He's got some pretty strong mustache game, wouldn't you yeah, agree? Yeah, yeah. He's rocking that handlebar mustache. Mm -hmm. And so one of my favorite parts was we were able to ride with him for the first time. And if I'm not mistaken, it was his first RMC. Yes, in, not only his first time on yep, Twisted Timbers. We rode it in the back, I believe. I was sitting with him and you were in the. You were in the seat in front, ahead of us. Exactly, with, with Alex. Alex. Yeah, and... And so his first RMC, his first time in Twisted Timbers. Let's pretend that you're Daniel. We're going up the lift hill, and now the ride goes down and go. You're oh, Daniel. my gosh! This is great! Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh! Oh. And then laughter. Oh, ha, ha. That was the greatest reaction ever. Literally... From that barrel drop to the brake run, he never stopped squealing and shrieking. It was the best reaction ever, and it made me laugh hearing him laugh. And I told him, that's Wicked Cyclone for me. There is no coaster in the world that makes me laugh like Wicked Cyclone. The whole thing just feels so silly. So it was so cool to be able to ride with him and experience that pure joy that that's what coasters are all about. On one of the other days in the weekend, we got to meet in two different locations. First at Central Park Funland, which we'll talk about on the next episode. We got to ride a little bit with Coaster Celebrity, who was formerly on In The Loop and now is a ride architect slash engineer for GCI and someone who's very well known in the industry. And that was? Adam House. Ah, very cool. So he came down just for the Twisted Timbers opening weekend. And what a nice guy, huh? Yes, he was really nice. First, we met him at Central Park Funland, where we saw him with Clint. They were doing the VR. The VR was pretty neat, and we'll talk about that more yeah. on the next episode. We got to walk around with him at King's Dominion, where we did a couple rides together. And this was the coolest part of it. And he was talking to Andrew a little bit. Andrew, who one of your 17 potential future jobs is to be a ride designer, right? Yeah. What are some of the other possibilities? So, there's a rock star. MLV player, dentist, a ride designer, a builder, what else? I, I think that's the round. Well, geologist was. Oh, geologist. So it was nice to talk to someone whose dream was to become a ride architect, and, and now you uh, were able to talk to him about it, so yeah, that's kind of neat. he lived up to his dream. One of our favorite moments with Adam was where we went to Avalanche. So Avalanche, if you're not familiar with it, is their bobsled Bobbin, coaster. Yeah. Toboggan. Bobsled coaster. Kind of like Whizzer at Six Flags Great America. And then the 
one at Great Escape. Well, like, and I should kind say, of. that's much more like the coaster, but like Wizard in terms of seating, yes. where it's potentially one or two people per car, yeah. and you get to sit in the same car in a very, let's say, intimate way yes. uh, with um, some body contact. And so we were in line, and Adam was with two friends from GCI, and we were with Clinton Sherry, and of course the two of them rode together. And then I was in line to ride with Alex, and I told Adam, you go ahead, since I've got both boys here, and we'll go on the next train. And Adam it was so nice of him, said, oh, it's okay, I'll ride with Andrew. And so I rode with Alex and, and Adam, who just met Andrew, rode with him, which I thought was very generous. I didn't in any way say, hey, can you do that? Some people who don't have kids, it might be awkward. But that was super nice of him. Cool. It, was, it was very cool to sit with him because, like, I'm sitting right next to the ride designer of Mystic Timbers and many other great coasters. And that was kind of a privilege, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And I have a feeling that we tried to set it up the next time we get to the Cincinnati area that we can meet up with Adam and do a little interview and you can get all the tips about how to potentially become a ride architect. Yep. So big thanks to Adam for that. One of our other interesting interactions where on one of the other days, it might have been Saturday, where we were waiting in line for Mystic Timbers and we were in the last two rows. And the last two rows, yeah. it, it takes a little bit more time. We yeah. had... People sit. More people sit there, so it's a little Call bit longer. Me. And there were a couple of instances of people with medical situations that had cards to skip the line and went in our line, so it took a little bit longer. So we were the next ones up, and or maybe two. Yeah, uh, we. There was one person. Two people in front of us, but they're riding together. Oh, riding together. Okay. So we were going to go in two trains when all of a sudden, who shows up to take our lines? Taylor from Coaster Studios and his friends. Yeah, exactly. And Taylor, we've gotten to know pretty well from over the years. We've met him a number of times at King's Dominion, at Hollywood Nights, and the classic yeah. memory of him being on the same train as Alex and I when Alex and I did the last 10 rides in a row on the voyage at night, and Taylor was right behind us, and he he was shocked that Alex at last year, so he was six years old, was able to ride the voyage over and over and over, as that is definitely a physical test. And so we've gotten to know him pretty well. And yeah. here he comes from the exit, along with Rocco from One Wheel Productions, and they come in front of us. And I was like, wait a second, Alex was going to ride with Clint, and I was going to ride with Andrew. And I was like, oh, look at this guy taking our seats. And he buried his head. And that's the post that we put onto our Facebook and yeah. Twitter accounts. And of course, we were the ones who had to wait. Like, not, no other people he had he would cut in front of. It was us. I think he was, like, playing it out because he was waiting at the exit for a long time. Like, oh, I think we're going to cut in front of them because we know them. So that was pretty hilarious. And Clint was yelling out, look at this guy. And my favorite part of it is because Clint knew that they were there and he knows him well. Somehow, Clint was able to get Taylor's ride picture from Fun Picks and, and posted that as well. And poor Taylor, we made fun of him, even though it wasn't his fault that they took those rows. So that was funny. And everyone was cracking up about that. Mm-hmm. Throughout the days, we did a couple of other rides. We really didn't do a ton of other things. We did Anaconda a couple of times. We did Grizzly once. We did Racer 75, which is the smoothest that I've ever felt it in the yep. three years we've been going there. Well, it's not... It was Rebel Yell when we rode it, and it was not as smooth. Yes, but now, yep. a track work they did, at least on my side, we raced against you, and who won? We did! No, nope. We beat you nope. by, like, a mile. Nope. You were still on the lift hill while... When you're at the break one. Yeah. And, and you're just being a sore loser about it. We beat you by right. literally a mile. We've got some revisionist history going on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was able to do Intimidator once with Sherry, and we did it in the second row, which we love. It's a little elevated above the first, so no line in the second row. There were a couple things closed, though. Eiffel Tower, Backlot, and the Crypt were all closed, but they could still be going yeah. through testing, so oh, no big deal there. Oh, and Drop Tower. And Drop Tower. So a number of things that were closed, but no big deal. We'll be back there again eventually restaurant wise outer hanks has some yes, new food outer, so that was excellent outer hanks has new food there's a new restaurant i believe it's called the mac bowl the, and there's some new stuff at jukebox including the twisted timber yes. yeah jukebox center yep. yeah yeah and then and the shop the shop that was like a rock and roll thing yes theme, is now twist and shop 
Yes. Which is different. And the merch is so cool. Uh, yeah, we should post that here in a little bit. We got a couple of different shirts, but the, particularly the white one, Andrew really loves, so we got one of those. Yes. So really nice merchandise. I thoroughly agree. And then just around the park, they added some more refreshing stations. Oh, a lot more. Like, a lot more stations. A yeah. lot more yep. shade. And they even said, like while the, they were talking in the, in the media day event, that they... I believe got rid of like something like 1,300 something feet of blacktop. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's impressive and just makes it cooler on a hot day and looks so much nicer. Yeah, it looks a lot nicer. So overall, Twisted Timbers is such a great addition to the park. Yep. This makes four really strong coasters at the top of their list. Yes. With I-305, Twisted Timbers, Volcano, and Dominator. It really takes King's Dominion to a whole new level. Now, sadly, on this trip, you weren't quite able to do no. the 54-inch coasters yet. It literally was a quarter of an inch. So incredibly close. So the hope is when we get back, maybe in June, you'll be able to do it. Uh, so just lots of protein. Yep. Lots of stretching. Mm -hmm. Spike your hair up a little bit. Sure. Hard to say what my favorite is. In some ways, Twisted Timbers might be my favorite there. I-305, I really like. Since I'm a big fan of airtime, I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite there. Volcano is so much fun, but a little bit short. So in some ways, Twisted Timbers is right up there for candidate for the best coaster at that park. Would it be your favorite King's Minion as of right now? Yes, probably as of right now. Yeah, so we'll see if that's true when we come back in June. Now, one thing with Twisted Timbers, it made me realize that to rank coasters, I think I, I'm getting towards the end of that for me, especially RMC coasters. Like when a lot of people tried to say, oh, I would put this here or there. It's so hard for me to compare this to Lightning Rod, which I love, to say which one is quote unquote better. They both do what they do well, but they couldn't be any more different. Lightning Rod, which is just all about speed and a frantic pace and crazy out of control airtime and take your breath away moments is great, yeah. but so incredibly different than this. So I can't rank them which order I like them best. Even Goliath, which is so incredibly different. I love those inversions, which are just so radically different than Twisted Timbers. So I can't even really compare this to Goliath. Mm -hmm. They're just all yeah. very different rides. Like Goliath, I feel like that one is more in the air. It's like very high up instead of low to the ground moments. It's taller usually than Twisted Timbers would go. So pretty much all of the RMCs are different than the others with Maybe one special moment or just the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, they are. It's it's really hard to rate them, but they're all great in their own way. And so we left Sunday afternoon about 2 o'clock in the afternoon to head back, and we got back in to New York pretty late yeah. for... Around 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah, yeah, to make it a rough day. Then the next day on short and sleep, but it was so worth it and a terrific trip. So again, we can't give enough thanks to Clint and Sherry that we got to spend so much time with them. It was great to spend lots of time in the park with them, outside of the park, do tons of rides with them, and have a ton of fun. They're both just great people who love to have fun and are awesome to hang out with. Yep. And we look forward to seeing them again over the summer and perhaps them being able to come up to do some parks up here and spend some time with us up north, possibly going to Canada's Wonderland, which they haven't yes. been to yet. And so, Darien Lake, which and, they haven't been yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For our ride of the day this week, we chose to pick a ride that I didn't do this weekend no, uh, because you, but, because Alex yeah. wasn't able to do it yet, though he's not that far away. But you did with Clint and... And Sherry. Yeah, well, you're right. So she obviously couldn't sit next to you for it. Yeah, but, but she was on the same ride. On the same yeah. cycle. So yeah. you comforted Clint on this ride? Yep. Uh, our ride of the day is, drumroll please... Windseekers! Yes, Windseekers. So for you, Windseeker, you've only done one? I've done the one, and the... No, I've done two. Let's see the point we did once. Oh, we did that one? Yeah. I don't even remember that. Okay. It was once, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then... Which is weird, because we so rarely ever see it open there. Yeah, it's almost never open. And then I did it once at King's Dominion, which was my first Windseeker, and then this one. So I've oh. done three win or. So we ride the Windseeker. Okay. For those who aren't familiar with Windseeker, what is that? So that's basically, there's a tall tower, and then there are, like, swings attached to this big disc in the middle. And it, like, 
it spins around. It goes about 300 feet tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so it's, so over it's a big. Feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes around the big tower at, uh, I would say, about 40 miles an hour. But yeah, around there. Okay. For those who like who are scared of heights, that's kind of scary. But for those who aren't afraid of heights, it's just a nice, peaceful ride. And it's cool because while we were going up, Clint was telling me like what they had to do to evac. So there are these big baskets next to Hypersonic, where Hypersonic went. Yes. And so they would have to clip it onto the tower, and it would go up, and your, your strength would unlock, and the baskets would come right below you, and you would have to, like, jump into the basket. And I think you can see those on Grizzly, the apparatus yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can see it from Windseeker. Thinking about it, what other parks that we've been to have Windseekers? So Cedar Point, King's Dominion. And well, that, that's it for me. That's what I did. But what other parks have them that you oh, know of? So I believe, does King's Island have one? Yeah, do you remember where King's Island is? No. Right next to Vortex in that corner. Oh, yeah. Where Racer is, at the end of Racer, near Mm -hmm. near Vortex. All right. So that's one Cedar Fire Park. Uh, Another one, way up north. Canada's Wonderland. And that's sort of uh, uh, of going up the hill. Yeah. Sort of by Vortex. A little behind the mountain. So how do you compare Wind Seekers to Sky Screamers? Oh, my gosh. Sky Screamers are so much better. And more people could ride them because they are like 44 inches to go on. And... And so, like, instead of, like, bars holding, like, there are metal bars and Windseekers, but on Skyscreamers, there are chains. It's just little metal chains that you're hung to. And how is that ride experience different because of the chains? Oh, my gosh. Like, on windy days, get so much wind and you'll just blow. Not, like, crazy, like, you'll go backwards, but, like, you'll... Like, sway a little bit. Um, it's just so much better, even though it might not be taller, but the one at Six Flags New England, that's about 400 feet, right? Right, and so those models that are taller, and that one's at 400 feet, which is crazy, that has the different height restriction. Yeah, that's uh, like 48. Yeah, so that's 40 inches compared to 44 with the parent yeah. on the shorter ones. So yeah, you don't get that swaying sensation at all. So it's a nice ride that you have a great view up there and you're able to look around. But other than that, some of the rattling as you go up the tower, yeah. that rattling is a little unsettling as the wheels go up the tower. I don't really get scared. Oh, you do. That a makes bit. me a little nervous when you hear all that rattling going on. Yeah. Now, the one thing I'll say about Windseekers, one of the positives is at night. Yes. And what is so great about them it, at night? It's just an amazing view. But like the light package, do you eh, remember? It's okay. Oh, those LED lights are beautiful on the wind seekers. That's mm, one of the best parts of them. It's okay. But it's such an ironic name, of course, because of wind. Because it with seeks wind. Seekers. And how does it do in the wind? It is usually shut down in the wind. <laughs> it's like a but wind like, seeker that can't handle it. It'll the go wind. up and like see the wind coming, and it's like. Okay, I saw wind, so we better not ride today. Exactly. Because it's wind seeker, like when you're seeking, you're looking. And stopping and not riding. A nice ride uh, to be able to have a great view if there's not an observation tower at a park, but just not as exciting as a skyscraper. Okay. All right, Alex, can you sing a little bit for us? Tip of the day, tip of the day, it's the tip of the day. Tip of the day, tip of the day, it's the tip of the day. Yeah! For our tip of the day, we thought of this one being at King's Dominion as we were. And our tip of the day for this week is when a ride goes down for maintenance, sometimes that's the best time to get in line. When we were just at King's Dominion, what ride went down? Not Volcano. So what ride went down? Volcano. Yes, Volcano. And a lot of times that line gets pretty long, but when they shut down, a lot of people leave and and go away to another ride. But quite often that's a ride that will reopen pretty quickly, that they just have to maybe reset something and then it opens back up. So in those kind of situations, right after a ride shuts down, a lot of times if you just give it a little bit of time, you can be on the first or second train, whereas that's a line that can go pretty slowly and take a while. Yeah, but if it, what we do is, if it's more than 10 minutes, we'll, 
go and do other things in the area, and then we'll come back. Yeah, the volcano is definitely down a lot. So on our next episode, we'll be talking about our trip to Central Park Funland in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Yeah, and we did a interview with Clint, the general manager, and so... Clint who? Uh, uh, let me see. Is it Novak? Is that his Oh, name? yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so Clint Novak, right. So we interviewed him. He's the one whose friend has the beanie, the weird hat thing. That friend. Uh, did we interview him about broccoli? Uh, no, it was um steak. It was steak. Steak and broccoli. Yeah. Or just steak. Just steak. All right, so that's uh, oh, that'll be coming out pretty soon. Since that was something recent, and so we want to get that out there. Really yeah. interesting place, and if you haven't gotten there yet, you need to. So we'll be talking it's so about that. Fun. It's, it's, it's so much fun. In some ways, I think the boys had a better time at Central Park Funland than they did at King's Dominion, which is saying a lot since King's Dominion is such a great park. Yeah, and when you're in there, you can't get out, literally. Like, it's such a... Such a fun place. And so much to do. Yes. On so not much. a ton of acreage. Be looking out for that episode, which will be out pretty soon. Join us on Facebook and Twitter at Theme Park Fam. And you can listen to us on iTunes. Please send a review if you do. Like an iTunes review, just to say like you, uh, how you liked it, what you think is good about this. Also, you can listen to us to Google Play Music, YouTube, iHeart, and Stitcher. Andrew plays shortstop, just like Robin Yount. But I know more about coasters. See you soon, Andrew out.